How's it going everyone? It's Alex. So there have been many different macOS apps and developers who have requested coverage for their specific apps that usually offer a variety of different solutions. Now, most of these apps are okay. Nothing that I would personally find interesting enough to show to you guys. Also, I sift through a lot of sponsored content that is often just mediocre products. I still haven't done any sponsored content on the channel since its inception, and I have seen a lot of apps. But this one, this one I found, not affiliated with a developer in any way, I just found it browsing on Twitter. And it seemed to be a compelling hack that promised to unlock the potential of the newest MacBook Pro and Pro Display XDR. You know, and at the beginning I thought to myself, what actually is this? And then it reminded me of a video I saw back in November where Jake Fishman compared a new MacBook Pro display to the old MacBook Pro display in outdoor usage. I found it interesting because not many people have spoken about the SDR brightness in outdoor usage and overall how the display doesn't necessarily peak its brightness at a thousand nits when it could. As you know, Apple really began ramping up usage of mini LED panels since they were first introduced last year. And while OLED displays are continuing to grow in popularity, mini LED overall can have superior brightness performance, durability, and HDR capabilities. But before we get into this technology, let's talk about last year's MacBook Pro. Last year's MacBook Pro used an IPS panel and capped out at 500 nits peak brightness. The newer MacBook Pro uses the new Liquid Retina XDR display and can push up to a 1600 nit peak brightness with up to 1000 nit sustained brightness in HDR. But keep in mind, that's in HDR. So technically speaking, the new MacBook Pro and old MacBook Pro are essentially the same brightness in SDR. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with that. 500 nit brightness is more than enough for what 95% of people do on their laptop. And by default, macOS does limit the display's brightness for everything except HDR content and certain apps. What the Vivid app does is it essentially integrates a second brightness bar underneath your primary stock brightness bar that allows you to control an additional metal layer that's overlaid on top of the entire screen so it can be triggered for all apps. Now there's no black magic trickery here. They are using standard APIs that are normally used for triggering HDR in certain specific apps. Off topic, Vivid's logo does kind of remind me of Walmart. That doesn't really matter, I just thought it was kind of funny. They have made the integration feel pretty natural in how it appears when it's kicked on. And obviously this is fairly new, like it just launched a couple days ago, it's still on version 1.0, but it's compelling to experiment with. So if you're interested in checking this out, I would be mindful that this is buggy, like absolutely super buggy still. There are some quirks to it, but I think the first thing that comes to mind is it, can this be harmful to the display? What are the temps looking like? And how does this affect battery life performance? Now, at first I was a little bit speculative about how this would perform, but then I thought about it. There is a lot of video editors that use the MacBook Pro that sustain a thousand nit peak brightness when working on HDR workflows. Now, how does it work when we're going kind of outside of Apple's bounds? That's what we started to see with this. Apple themselves has claimed the display can support editing an HDR photograph or video within the entire frame at a thousand nits of brightness indefinitely. macOS also does have a hard limit on how hot the display can get before it'll just begin slowly forcefully dimming the display. And of course, lifespans of screens ultimately get lowered if they're blasting brightness 24 seven because heat eventually degrades the LED junction element, thus reducing the light output of an LED. So Vivid's hack is specifically claiming to keep all of Apple's heat management features intact with no safety features being circumvented. Okay, so is battery life and heat actually an issue? Vivid's developer claims that there's about a 7% increase in temperature that occurred after three hours of boosted brightness, but this was calculated in Celsius, which wouldn't really be accurate unless they got to these results with absolute temperature units like Kelvin. I did run my own testing, which showed that battery life absolutely tanks with the brightness bump. Playing the same 4K video on loop for both tests showed that after three hours, stock max brightness left the Mac with 69% and Vivid at around 17%. Temperatures didn't really vary that much. The display did obviously run hotter with HDR brightness maxed and never really got hot enough to trigger any warnings or dim the display. 
With that aside, some of the bugs as of right now include issues screenshotting individual windows, blowing out screen recordings, and I also found that it doesn't apply to the mouse cursor because the mouse cursor is drawn outside of the usual frame buffer. And this layer can't really be altered with an overlay that's active. Another issue that is obvious is the color inaccuracy. So I wouldn't use this for more serious work, but for using this in bright environments like outside as summer's right around the corner, the ability to bump up the brightness is pretty amazing. Now I'd say the biggest bugs right now, one of them funny enough, literally allows you to bypass the trial and get the entire full version without paying for it. So they definitely need to address this. And the second one is the contrast issues that you run into when you're watching YouTube videos. Now this can be circumvented as funny enough as moving the mouse. Just moving the mouse will actually make the display not have this washed out contrast issue. They recommend using VLC as of right now, but yeah, it's not a perfect solution. And this HDR brightness does seem to have some visual artifacting issues occasionally. Black levels are still pretty good, a bit more blooming, but overall it's still rough around the edges. And I've been using it for the past couple of days and video doesn't really do it justice. The brightness level is legitimately doubled. It looks really good when you're watching SDR content or just looking at the display in general. Of course, I have to move the mouse when watching these videos to prevent the wash contrast from appearing, but this has quite literally made the outdoor experience actually usable. Uh, tons of outdoor camera equipment, like outdoor screens, are usually really high brightness to combat the sun. And uh, using this without the 500 nit screen limitation on a sunny day is actually really cool. It's really nice. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this 24 seven. I would experiment it. There is no really long-term data on how this affects your screen, nor is there official Apple support. And who's to say that in a couple months, Apple just decides to dock this with a future update. The devs seem to be pretty cool guys that promise a full refund if the project does get shut down within the first three months. But yeah, I found this kind of interesting. So if you want a brighter screen to combat the sun, or just want the functionality of completely unlocking the display's brightness for just day-to-day -day usage, this thing's pretty cool. Vivid is being offered for about 15 euros or 16 bucks. And another alternative that offers similar functionality and even more flexibility and customization is Lunar, which also seems to be like a compelling deal for anyone wanting to tinker with your display's brightness and settings. I thought this was a cool app that I wanted to bring to the light because I haven't seen anyone cover it whatsoever. They have a free trial if you want to test it out yourself. Just be careful with it. I wouldn't be blasting brightness 24 seven. Again, this isn't sponsored. I just found it interesting. Overall, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have any future video idea suggestions, I would love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.